And that's even like with this AI thing, like, oh yeah, a lot of people are like, oh yeah, it's gonna take my job as an assistant. Well, why don't you use it? Like learn how to use it yes. and be a better assistant. So now if you do leave, somebody be like, oh yeah, I can do all this stuff. They realize, oh, wait a minute. They was doing a whole lot <laughs> with yeah. this thing that I didn't even realize. And maybe they'll call you back or maybe be like, nah, forget you. I'm, I'm working with 10 other folks. You yeah, know what I'm saying? For real. But that's what we need to do. We need to embrace technology and understand that, yeah, nothing is going to stay the same. Yeah. No, no. Everything changes all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I definitely agree with you. A lot of these positions that we have years ago, network engineers were like really big because, you know, they were in the, in the data centers and the server rooms and all those types of things, right? Well, now we got the cloud. So yeah, them they didn't go nowhere. They just learned cloud technology. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that's just what happens. We just learn and we 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 evolve and yeah. we grow. All right, y'all. So I'm sure all y'all know the number one thing that's been on everyone's lips lately has been AI, ChatGPT, Bard, all these different AI platforms, and what's taking the world by storm right now. So of course, it only makes sense that on Tech is a New Black, we start talking about this thing. This is something we talked about a lot behind the scenes, but we knew that we didn't want to just talk about it plainly with our audience. We wanted to bring on someone that I see as a bit of an expert uh, that can speak on this on a much more deeper level from different angles and perspectives that even I myself would not be able to touch on it from. So y'all, I'm very excited to bring on our guest that we have for y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and read off his bio so that way y'all can get a little bit more familiar before we jump into the interview. So Robert McNair is a highly motivated public speaker with 20 years of experience in IT. As a skilled speaker, Robert captivates audiences with his energetic delivery and in-depth knowledge of the cloud industry. And so now that's his bio. Now I'm going to tell y'all, I actually met Robert at an event. Uh, it was it was at a, a tech event recently, and he was speaking on ChatGBT to the audience that was there. And he was doing such a great job. I was learning a lot. I was taking notes and I was like, yo, I would love it if we get him, get him on the podcast. So super happy that he's here. Y'all go ahead and give a virtual applause. Those of y'all that are watching, do a bunch of clapping emojis for our guest, Robert. Bro. What's up, man? Man, thank you so much for coming <laughs> on, dude. Man, glad to be here. Glad to be a part of the pod, man. Yeah, thank man, you for having me. Now, this is, a, this is a major blessing because obviously we see what's happening in the world, the world right now. Yeah. And it's so important. And you know this even better than I do. So important for people to be aware of like what's happening, for them to be educated. Because, yeah, the news, everyone's going to talk about these things. But kind of similar to, to crypto and Bitcoin, <laughs> you, you can hear about something a lot, yeah. but still not really understand or grasp. What is this? What does this mean for me? Is this something I could use? Mm -hmm. Is this is this just, you know, kind of like a, you know, just kind of like a quick flash of something that's going to go away? Uh, so, man super super happy to have you on i guess yeah. just to kind of like kind of get things started do you think that ai bar chat gbt do you think that this is something that's just a cool cute thing that's here for now or do you believe this is something where it's like no this is the new world that we're stepping into oh this is just like uh the introduction of the calculator bro like oh man you remember before the well you don't remember now i, I don't remember, remember the either, i remember like, the introduction like but <laughs> They, my dad and them used to use them adding machines, right? They used to have these little squares with these little uh, balls on it, and that's how they would be able to add, right? But what revolutionized things was the calculator, the basic yeah. cal calculator. Then we, we got into high school, we had to get like the TI-85 and the TI-89 and all that. Well, basically, this is how it's revolutionized things. We're not going to go back to the adding machine, just like we're not going to go back to the regular search engine and how we're able yeah. to do things. Yeah. Man, I'm, I'm so excited to uh, get into this further. Um, definitely want to uh, just follow the, the flow of questions that we have on here. Um, yeah, for those of y'all that are listening and watching, uh, we're definitely going to dive more deeply into AI. Uh, but first, uh, first question. So again, so we met um, we met at BikeCon yeah. in, um, in Miami, and you were teaching about how the general public can use ChatGBT. And that's what I wanted you to teach our community today. But first, what it, was your journey like getting into the tech industry? Man, I've been in tech for so long now. Um, I actually started at a, at a really young age, um, actually working on Commodore 64 in the 80s. Like Commodore 60. Yeah, I, I heard like, of that. What is that? Yeah, well, so it's a, it's one of the first computer flat, well, personal computer platforms. And it was basically this keyboard that was basically the brain of it, almost like the hard drive, but you couldn't do all the stuff you could do now. And a floppy disk drive. And, it just uh, hit me, you said 94. No, uh, what? You ninety four? No, no, Commodore sixty four. Oh, sixty four. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. I thought you said you was in tech in ninety four. Oh, wait, hold up, hold up. I didn't see that on your LinkedIn. Eighty four. Yeah. Wait, so, you been in tech since eighty four? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's Yo, when I first started. We've not had someone that's been in Texas before <laughs> the nineties. That's that's we really got to get sound effects, Eric. Like for real, because I, I would hit something right there. I don't even know what I hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but no. Okay, so, so Commodore uh, sixty four. Yeah, mm -hmm. nineteen eighty four. I was uh, three years old, and um, my dad would have the Commodore sixty four. He'd do work on it, right? Yeah, but. We also were introduced to games, me and my sisters, and the only way you could play a game was to write a short um, script or a short mm -hmm. program in order to get access to the game. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a really big game fanatic, so that's kind of like my start with the gaming and all of that. Yeah. And while a lot of people were doing a lot of gaming, I wanted to know how it worked. Mm -hmm. So I started reading about coding at a young age, and my dad was like teaching me things at a young age. So I've literally had my entire life in tech. I've done other things. I've sold cars. I've worked retail. Yeah. But I came back to tech and consistently I've been in tech since 2003. So I left and I came back. But yeah, since 2003. And you were in the, did they even call it the tech industry at the time? Um, you, like back in 2003? Because I know right no, now it's, no, everybody's like no, tech, tech, tech. And no. I'm one of people's like tech, tech, tech. But No, no. It was just computer science or uh networking or something like that it was yeah. not like tech is something that uh it, and it's a good good phrase to yeah. encompass everything right but it people always thought you did everything in tech anyway so like say for example i went to school for and i never graduated from it but i went to school originally at devry for computer science or yeah. computer information systems and people were calling me for like take the virus off my computer Build me this computer. Uh, and then later on, it was like, can you build an app? Can you do websites? It was like, I don't do everything, y'all. Yeah. I tried my hand at stuff, but but I realized that people just, they, they'll, they'll put you in that category of tech just because you have that acumen or that ability to be able to work with cameras or even, you know, to work with computers, you know? Yeah. yeah one of the things that I, so I'm a, uh, I served in the Marine Corps and uh, Eric, oh, something Eric's fine. a uh, Navy man. Uh, is Navy men, naval men, seamen, 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 sailor. Sailor. Sa sailor moon. He's a sa and Eric's a sailor moon. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shouts out to all the sailor moons out there, but uh, no, so what <laughs> the, the Marines can no, say, no, no, re respect, respect to all the sailors. All, all due respect, I'm, I'm cracking, but respect to all the uh, all the um, the sailors, um, and everybody who served. But yeah, one of the things in the military is interesting is that. People assume if you say like, "Oh, I'm a I'm a marine," or "I'm I'm a soldier," or "I'm a, I'm a sailor," whatever it is, people are like, "Oh man, like you know, be careful out yeah. there. They're gonna put you on the front lines." And it's like, what? Like people assume <laughs> yeah. that everybody does the exact same yeah, job. Yeah, facts. And that's what facts. I guess, in my opinion, I feel like that's the same way most people see yeah. the tech. Like, oh, you work in tech, mm -hmm. so you do all of these yeah, things, like, right? No. <laughs> No, all of it is good, but yeah. yeah, not 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 all of it. You can find your niche, and people pivot as well. Yeah. So you know, you have your niche that you can do to it. You may you may not like it. You go to something else, but yeah, like the all encompassing, all know it all tech person. That yeah, that person don't exist. Yeah. <laughs> not, very true. Very true. I've yet to meet a person that even knows everything, even about their specific. Even if they've yeah, they've no. stuck to one thing for twenty years, because mm -hmm. things are constantly evolving yeah. and changing. Every three to six months, technology changes. Uh, so this is why, you know, I kind of get on my high horse talking about like when people want to go to college for IT, I'm kind of like, dude, that's three or four years. Do you know that what you're learning now is going to be totally obsolete? Yes. In the first year. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Get out there. Start now, you yeah. know? That's real. That sounds like that ad. Start now. You sit on your couch. <laughs> yeah. <chilling>. That is. <laughs> Start now. <laughs> Facts. That's exactly what it is, though. Real talk. All right, cool. So, all right, so look, so you did a lot of work in the church. Yeah. And uh, when it comes to building out their tech blueprint, what was that experience like? Well, I, I started, it was so crazy. I started at a World Changers Church International, in the international shouts out to Dr. Oh, Dr. Wow. Pastor Tavi. Yeah. And uh, I literally got the job because. Uh, I was sitting in a youth conference, um, and Pastor Dollar was talking, and I served in the ministry, and he didn't really know me at the time, and he stopped in the middle of the conference while he was preaching and said, Rob, you're going to build me an app. And I was like, now mind you, I was in like network engineering, yeah. building computers, and I was like, all right. There's a whole so, other one. Yeah. I was like, hold up, I don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, but I was like, all right, but now little did he know, though, in my mind, I was thinking about how we could bring more tech folks and how we can engage people in the tech space because that's yeah. what all all i knew and so uh i ended up doing it right mm -hmm. um 
And I took it to his son and I was like, hey, here's the app that your dad was um, telling me that I could build. He was like, all right, cool. Two weeks later, they're like, hey, can you come in for an interview? And I was like, yeah, sure. So I came in, they gave me a tech interview, like a, um, a code interview. I have no idea how I passed it whatsoever. Like I have no idea. What? So, but you, you knew how to code, like you know how to code, right? I knew, I tinkled, tinkered around a little yeah. bit, but just to make the app, but it was yeah. in the Objective-C. This stuff was asking like C++ stuff, and, and I was just like, I was just, just answering it, right? Yeah. And uh, they got a, they gave me a call back. We're like, okay, when would you like your start date to be? I was like, would I pass? Oh, okay, straight. <laughs> so this was in 2011. Mm -hmm. And from then, like, one of the things I tell people, like, don't even be intimidated when you have, um, when you don't know everything in tech. Yeah. Learn mm -hmm. on the job. Because that's yes. literally what I did. I, love I that. learned on a job. And in six months, that app had over 100,000 downloads. Whoa! Yeah, um, that's insane. Wrote his, wrote his hair, just leaned over like, <laughs> like what? Yeah, hundred thousand downloads. One of the key attributes to it was I saw other ministries like Elevation, and other ministries they just had the streaming part, mm -hmm. but a lot of us said no. Doctor Dollar, no, he's a big, big teacher. Yeah. So I was like, well, why don't we just take his study notes and make a quiz off of it? And then publish a quiz every oh, week based off of study notes. Wow. And people were doing it. And that's when people were doing a lot of the um That was the idea. That shares. was the idea you came up with? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, that's that's fire. Yeah. And people were doing the whole the gaming shares with all the different games that they were playing on Facebook. That's when that was popular. And people started sharing the quiz. And so that's how I mean, all over the world, I was looking at the numbers and I was just like, Whoa. And I was the only one in the department that was looking at this was like I can't even believe it. That's like, insane. and I'm showing folks or whatever. They're like, yeah, because right, they I'm, don't fully, they don't no, fully grasp no. the magnitude of something like right. that. Somebody in Zimbabwe, somebody over in Australia, somebody in Nigeria, all these different places, and I'm sitting here like, and these folks are staying on it because you can see how long people stay on the app. These people are staying on the app like this is huge, and Man. you know it helped catapult in other digital areas, digital giving, you know, text to give. I worked on all of that type stuff. Even was it was the app? Was it a free app? Yeah, free app. So there weren't like any ads or anything. No, being mm -mm. man. Nope. Of course, I'm just thinking like the money that could have been made. I don't want nobody judging me. <laughs> don't be judging me with your judging eyes. But I'm just like, man. But that's that's a huge. But that's ministry though. That's, you know yeah, what I mean? That's true. That's ministry. That's, real. that's ministry, and that that's what you know drove a lot of people to be able to stream and connect and all of that type stuff, man. So man, yeah. that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I was there for eight years. So. So what, I guess when it comes to technology and ministry, were there any like, I guess any red tape or any things that you wanted to do or that you were trying to present to ministries at all and that they just weren't seeing the value of it? Ministries, and it's sad to say, ministries do not embrace technology. Um, I have a lot of pastor friends. I have a lot of um, friends that are just really high up in ministry and they don't, they think it's all about that inner circle of people coming to church. I even hear people talking about they're going to stop streaming to Facebook and YouTube oh my and gosh. they want people oh, to come back to they, church. Because they think that the streaming is keeping people from coming in. So they think if they stop streaming, people are going to come to church if they stop streaming. Right. And people, they just going to find another ministry. That's all yeah. they're going to find. And, you know, you got to understand that if you, like, you got to accept eCampus as being a campus, right? Yeah. And talk to them. Say, thank you for joining us wherever you are. Blah, blah, blah. Ask them to give. They're going to give if you ask them to give. But yeah. if you ignore them, then, of course, they're not going to they're not gonna be able to connect with you. But if you, like, treat them as another campus, yeah, that's what you need to be able to do. Yeah, I've seen some pastors treat it almost as if it's just a recording. And mm -hmm. it's like, I'm not even going to acknowledge you. It's like, yeah. it's kind of like like y'all are there, but I'm right. just focused on the people that are here. That's what they it's initially like, do. You know what's crazy? It kind, it's kind of akin to the whole remote work thing mm -hmm. where it's like there are companies that, and I, I, I understand the argument from both sides. But there are companies that are like, hey, no, we need people in office. Yeah. And it's like, well, are people, have they been performing? Have your numbers been mm -hmm. up? And it's like, if your numbers and things are up, wow. even though people are <laughs> yeah. working remote, why are you so adamant about them being in office? And I guess yeah. the first time I'm thinking about the same thing when it comes to ministry. Mind you, I'm for people being in in you know in the building and all mm -hmm. of that stuff. But it's like, well, I mean, do people have to be in the building, especially if they have a small group or they're connected and they're mm -hmm. giving and, and they're a part of the ministry? I don't know. That's interesting to think about. Yeah, and you know, because oftentimes we say, well, forsake not the assembling. Well, 
you know, we I understand the scripture, and I also understand when the scripture was actually written. Exactly. And, you know, assembling doesn't necessarily mean a whole bunch of people in the room because whenever you're streaming and you're on a chat, you're assembling with them same people. You may exactly. not see them face to face, but yeah. you're assembling with those people. You get connected. How many people have we met on social media that we've never met in person? Man, I have people that, like, are like I'm like yo they're a friend of mine yeah. I've never met him in person never just, you know what's interesting oh I guess we, we I guess we're gonna dive into it even coming to the notion we can even take it back the fact that Jesus there were times where people asked him to go and pray for people mm -hmm. and he was like they would be like oh no 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 like I trust your word yeah I trust that your yeah. word Runs virtually yep. can go mm -hmm. and touch them and bless them yeah. where they're at it's like you don't have to be there in person right. and I think that's something that that's some some ministers, I'm not going to tell ministers what they need to do, but I think some ministers maybe can sit on and think about that and be like, yo, like Jesus was able to minister and yeah. touch people in that same way. Yeah. And they weren't even able to see him on a screen. Right. And it's like, so how much can our ministry impact them? And exactly. They can see me on a screen. They can engage in the chat room. Exactly. Stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Totally right. I mean, if you think about it from the standpoint of um, Jesus, when uh, he met the lady at the well, he actually went out of his way to actually meet her. If you yeah. think about Jesus's marketing plan, you would think, oh, he just need to go out to every mountaintop and just reach as many people as possible, right? Yeah. Nah, but he actually went out his way to meet her, which was, you know, we 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 assumed that he was going to meet her at the well, mm -hmm. and he influenced her before he went on his way. Yeah. So we have to understand that every individual, no matter where they are, like we have to go to the people to be able to speak to them. Yeah. And if whether that's online, on Facebook, on YouTube, on our website, uh, even doing community outreach, it's not replacing community outreach; it's yeah. adding to. Because now you can touch people all over the world. Think about the people in Iceland who yeah. don't can't go to a church, but they're just like, man, I like watching this dude or this lady on TV. Yes. And now you're gonna cut off my stream? Like, this is this is what was feeding me, you know? Yeah. Hey y'all, we have some incredible, incredible news that I'm super excited about to finally announce our private tech community. Yes, yes, you heard that right a private tech community exclusively for you all who want more than just the podcast, you want more than just the FAQs, you wanna talk with tech recruiters, you wanna talk with, with hiring managers, you wanna talk with coaches, you wanna talk with people that can help with editing and rewriting your resume. Maybe you're somebody where you just wanna be a part of a community where we're talking about updates of what's happening in the software industry. Y'all, this community that we've launched is also going to involve a Discord where we're gonna be talking about updates in tech, we're gonna be talking about companies that are hiring. We're going to be talking about upcoming tech events. So that way you don't have to miss any of the gems that I know, but not even just what I know, but the gems that friends of mine that are also in the tech industry know as well. So if you want to be a part of that community, go ahead and sign up so that way you can join us. We have a few different tiers. Ultimately, it's all tuned in for you. Oh, and last thing, also within this community, we're going to be streaming all of our interviews with our podcast guests. So instead of you having to wait months to watch the videos later on, you will actually be able to watch the interviews in real time and ask your live questions to those guests. So make sure you join our tech community. Man, I, I definitely hope that, I actually hope, yo, for those of y'all that are listening and watching, um, I, I usually don't. Uh, ask y'all to like share things but I, I would say if any of y'all that have like close relationships with ministers or those that are just in some form of ministry and they might be battling or wrestling with this uh, definitely send them this clip so that way they could really just benefit from this kind of sit and savor on it i mean i, I appreciate it i didn't even think that, that was the direction you were going to go but yeah. uh, i appreciate that you went that direction cool, though. cool that's super fire so all right so working in tech uh, one of the things that I've noticed just from us talking is that, you know, working in tech runs in your family as well. Yeah. Uh, because your father, he helped pioneer some of the technology we use today, right? Yeah. So my dad is somewhat of a hidden figure, you know, like the, the movie Hidden Figures where the lady were helping out with NASA. Well, my dad yeah. actually worked on a barcode technology. This is the first time this is actually being shared publicly. He worked on a barcode technology in the late 60s, right? And um, like people at my job and stuff know, but... Um, uh, he worked on that with other developers and they got recognition of it, right? The scientists and developers, and he did it, and we know why. Man, you know, so ridiculous. he's got documentation where the memo, I think it was, that went out telling who worked on the project, right? With his mm -hmm. name not on there. And then he got the memo to the team saying, thank you for all your work, of course, with his name on there. Yeah. So um, he worked on that. He worked on other projects as well. So when I was a kid in the 80s, he's the one that got me on it. It was kind of like, I, this is something I'm doing, I like it, I want my son to do it because I know this is the future. Now mind you, 
he wasn't really making no money. He was actually doing a, um, a paper route, uh, leaving the house at one in the morning doing paper routes while he was working in tech because that's how much suppressed he was. But my dad, as far as the projects and stuff that he's been involved in, a lot of them have changed the entire world. Man. And so that's how I got into it. That is wild. You know, man, it's, it's so crazy to think because I almost wonder, because of course one of the things, like when people see me online talking about talking about tech, they're like, oh man, like it's, it's so unique to see, you know, a, a black man talking about this. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, I know being in the industry, it's like, no, I'm not the only one. Now right. I understand, okay, I'm the person for my community. Yeah. But it's like, no, there's, there are a lot of us. But I almost wonder if I'm like, man, if there weren't so many hidden figures like your father and like I'm sure uh, many others in this mm -hmm. industry, maybe more of people who look like us and just more people in general would just have been aware of this industry and aware of the yeah. opportunity that's here and aware of just, hey, like, oh, OK, I see someone like me who's in the industry yeah. or I see someone like me who's being listed as being a part of some project mm -hmm. or creating something. And so I wonder how that suppression how that suppression has also suppressed just other people stepping into this industry. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, at the end of the day, we're forced to what feel like the only way you can make money is to be a, a ball player uh, or some type of entertainment or a doctor or a lawyer. Yeah, but I like to say tech is right there with it. Yes, because a lot of us make money more money than doctors, more yeah. money than lawyers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes entertainment type money. You yeah, know what I'm saying? It's like real. it's really out yeah. there, and I, you can get there quick. I have people, I have um, NBA players that their um, NBA and NFL players that their contracts are, are coming up and mm -hmm. they don't think they're going to get picked up. And they're DMing me even last night. Uh, the person that someone DMed me last night and he plays overseas or he, mm -hmm. he he just stopped playing overseas. And he messaged me like, hey, bro, I'm coming back to the States and I'm looking at this. Can you, can you help me out? And I'm like, and I told him in a voice, and I said, bro, this will be a perfect transition yeah. for you. I was yeah. like, because like money wise, no, no matter how much you were making before, especially if he, if he was playing overseas, it's like this won't be a huge drop for you, and yeah. you'll be able to scale back, yeah. or maybe even more from the money that you exactly. were making before. Facts, because now now you also have some notoriety as well because That's you true. played sports and all those types of things. So now you are a voice that people would actually listen to. Be like, man, he used to play in the NBA or he used to play overseas. Yeah. Now he in tech, like, and he didn't know nothing. You know, he might not even have graduated from college, but now he's like super successful in tech. And so yes. that's gonna bring more people. Folks like you, man, like I like to say, cause when I first came across you, uh, my wife actually showed me um, uh, uh, one of your videos or whatever. And she was like, you know, he's been in tech and he's a young guy. And I was like, man, that's so cool. And one of the things, even like, I want to give you your flowers. And be like, look, like, you're carrying the torch that my dad started with. Yeah. You know what I mean? So seeing you be able to do that, I'm like, man, like, like, this is the unintended exposure because God has his way of working things out. Yeah. That even still, so many people like us are now getting into tech just by some of the things that my dad and others have done, yeah. right? And this is stuff that just warms my heart. And if you're questioning even getting into this, listen, it's hard work. Like it is, it's a, like, it, it's not no quick, you know what I'm saying? A lot of <laughs> folks don't understand. Like they be like, oh yeah, I want to make six figures. bro. listen, just to get the six figures, it's going to take some work. Yeah. But understand when you apply yourself, yeah. You can get the 100, 200, 300K, you know, yeah. you just got to be able to apply yourself. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And de definitely shouts out to um, all the pioneers like your father. Because, yeah, I know a lot of people see, see me and they see the, the what I'm doing. And I'm like, well, yeah, they're, they're always trailblazers. Like there's trailblazers behind the trailblazers behind the trailblazers that basically set up these opportunities yeah. that we have today. Um, so, yeah, definitely uh, grateful for, for people like your father and others that, I mean, the beauty of it is that. And it's sad again going back to the hidden figures um, aspect where it's like, yo, that's trash. But it's like for people like your father to be willing to kind of take something like that on the chin, even though they yeah. shouldn't necessarily have to, at least being a part of the work showed people in the industry that knew the truth yeah. to be like, man, like, yo, we should be open to working with other people because they bring a lot of value. Yeah. And just really just them taking taking that kind of again that hit um on the chin it just 
slowly started opening the door more and more. So I know as many people see me and they're like, oh, Cyrus, like you're doing this, you're doing that. It's like, man, there are people that came before me, people that came before that, that they put in work and they dealt mm -hmm. with things that, yeah, it's easy for me to jump online mm -hmm. and just tell people, yo, you can get to take, make yeah, money. Yeah. But it's like, what's hard is is being a hidden figure and other yeah. things like that. So yeah, um, so yeah shout out to all the trailblazers. Yeah. Uh, those of y'all that are right. watching, listening, and you're like, yo, I'm a trailblazer. I've been in the industry for a long time. Shouts out to you. Thank you for the work Shouts you put in as yeah. well. Love it. I love it. All right, super cool. So, all right. So, 2023 is going to be considered the year of the AI boom. Yeah. Please explain Chat GBT, Bard, uh, and both the threats and opportunities that AI poses today. So, for uh, to give everybody a quick synopsis, Chat GPT and Bard, they are uh, generative pre-trained transformers. That's a tongue tie. But uh, what they are is they're basically chatbots. You know, you go to a website and, you know, you have a little bubble that pops up to say, how can we help you today, right? Yeah. And so you might type some stuff in there and it might not understand what you're saying, but you might type something in relation to the actual company and it'll understand. Well, that's uh, artificial intelligence, right? That's, that's a part of what ChatGPT and BART is. However, those uh, those those chatbots they actually have a small data set based off of that company. Yeah, just based off the company's yeah. information. Chat GPT and Bard, the data set is the internet, yeah. like the entire <laughs> internet. So anything that I type in there, whether it's a different language, it's gonna translate it, and it's not just gonna translate. Like you know, I can go to I can go to Mexico, right, and be like, yeah, I took some Spanish classes, but they're gonna be like, bro, you ain't even from here, right? <laughs> Because you know that I'm te teaching, reading it, or, or saying it verbatim by the book. Yeah. ChatGPT understands intent. They understand natural, it understands natural language. So I could literally learn in that aspect and actually be more considered someone who knew the actual language because of that. That's how deep and intricate it is. So when we talk about the AI boom, ChatGPT and BARD, these things are going, number one, they're around to stay. They're only yeah. going to get better. We need not be afraid. It's easy to be afraid. Yeah. Like, I mean, obviously, who hasn't watched Terminator, right? <laughs> so it's easy to be afraid, but you got to use it to embrace and to make you better. Yes. Think about, let's take about, think about you went, you would go to college for something and, and, and learn something in four years or whatever. Mm -hmm. You can sit in front of chat GPT and learn everything that you would learn in a specific subject within a matter of a couple of weeks or months just by sitting there and asking it to elaborate things. Now, it's not 100% correct, yeah. but at least sets you in the right direction. Yeah. And so it's it's amazing. It gets us out of the mindset like for 20 plus years or probably 30, probably close to 30 years now, we had the search engine where it was like, show me the capital of France, right? Yeah. And then all these different things will come up in Google. Well, what ChatGPT and what BAR does, it actually makes it uh, NLP, it's natural language processing. Yeah. So it's more conversational now. They call it conversational AI. Mm -hmm. So I can not have everything spelled correctly. I can, you know, miss, have improper grammar. And it's oh, going to understand but it can, all uh, of the, that. The whole intent thing yeah. you're saying. It's like, oh, I understand <clears throat> the intention that you meant yeah. with this. Yeah. And of course, you can tweak it and make it better. You can give. You can give it uh, specific prompts, like prompt engineering. It's like what everybody's learning. Like, like, how can I make this really benefit for me? Yeah, I'm not trying to find out what the capital of the France is for. Like, I'm really trying to figure out how to do my job. So whether it's coding, whether it's uh, creating marketing materials, just creating content in general, all of those different things you can use with ChatGPT is here to stay. But mm -hmm. there are some pitfalls, there are some issues. One of the things is I work with Microsoft, and one of the things that... <clears throat> we've been doing for years before anybody even heard about ChatGPT was responsible AI. There's unconscious bias, bias in AI. Mm -hmm. uh, Amazon ran into it uh, years ago while they had an algorithm to, I guess it might've been asking certain questions, but basically based off of the algorithm, they ended up only interviewing male, white male, man. yeah, white males man. because yeah, of about that. that. But it was inadvertent. Also, you have, um, <clears throat> I think Apple ran into something where uh, even with with the uh, facial recognition, the scanning mm -hmm. for our phones, like if you were a specific shade, it could not re register the texture of your skin. Wow. This is unconscious bias. So yeah. uh, one of the things Microsoft got ahead of, I think probably like the last seven or eight years, is making sure that in our utilization of and programming of AI that we get rid of that unconscious bias, which we have to continue to work at that. Yeah. I 
I believe that, that they're that they're a lot better at that. Cause I remember a few years ago, cause I heard something similar about that uh, that unconscious bias, where it was some years ago that Microsoft had gotten caught up in, and a few other companies did as well, where they realized that whatever team of developers that they had create something. Whatever the the general uh, the general um, like ethnicity and gender yeah. of that team, it ended up having a slight like yep. bias or proclivity in a, in a positive way towards people that seem like that. Uh, a friend of mine was talking about how, uh, and, and they had tested out with different groups. They'd even tested out with uh, a team in um, in Africa. I forget which country in Africa it was, but it was a team in Africa of engineers where they created something, and they had a bit of a the AI, the software had mm-hmm. a preference towards people that were black or exactly, African. Exactly. And so it just really kind of came to terms where it's like, yo, you really have to have a diverse team yeah. of people working on something. You can't just have like a, a whole team of this or a whole team of that. It's I know you really need diversity. You need other people, other brains coming in on things. So I think that's really interesting to see that and now seeing how that's playing out. It's dope to hear that, I guess, Microsoft learned from that lesson before. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they're like, okay, let's make sure we, we do it the proper way now. When it comes to uh, when it comes to what we're doing with AI, yeah. All right, so look, so a personal belief that I have, I believe in the next thirty to forty years, the majority of jobs will be replaced by AI, robotics, or some other form of technology that maybe hasn't even been created mm-hmm. yet or thought of yet. Uh, I would love to know why you agree or disagree. Um, I agree, but here's 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 what it is. Everything is going to change. Okay. When I was growing up. Um, the trash folks used to come, right? It used to be two men on the back of a truck, jump off the truck, they throw the trash can in, right? Yeah. Well, now most companies have the trash truck that has the arm that comes down, grabs your trash can and throws it oh, in the back, yeah. right? But it did not get rid of the fact that you still need to have folks working you know, at the trash companies, right? Yeah. And so things will change. Maybe you're not gonna be the cashier, but you can be the one behind the cashier or the one in the back. There's going to be, there's always going to be some change in something. It's not because a lot of people think, well, it's going to take all our jobs. No, it might take that job, but you're going to do something different. Yes. That's just what it is. Um, and that's even like with this AI thing, like, oh yeah, a lot of people are like, oh yeah, it's going to take my job as an assistant. Well, why don't you use it? Like learn how to use yes. it and be a better assistant. So now if you do leave, somebody be like, oh yeah, I can do all this stuff. They realize, oh, wait a minute. They was doing a whole lot <laughs> with yeah. this thing that I didn't even realize. And maybe they'll call you back or maybe be like, nah, forget you. I'm, I'm working with 10 other folks. You yeah, know what I'm saying? For real. But that's what we need to do. We need to embrace technology and understand that, yeah, nothing is going to stay the same. Yeah. No, no, Everything no. changes all the time. Mm-hmm. And so I definitely agree with you. A lot of these positions that we have years ago, network engineers were like really big because, you know, they were in the in the data centers and the server rooms and all those types of things. Right. Well, now we got the cloud. So, yeah, them, they didn't go nowhere. They just learned cloud technology. I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that's just what happens. We just learn and we we, we evolve and yeah. we grow. Yeah, I, I love that. I, I think um, it's kind of like the the Willy Wonka or you no know, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I think that was the second one, the one that had Johnny Depp in it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where when the, the in the movie the grandfather ended up losing his job to a robot. But then at the end of the movie, you know how at the end of the movie they always gotta like tie everything yeah, with a yeah, nice yeah. bow. At the end of the movie they say, oh and the grandfather now has a better job where he actually fixes the robot that replaced his job. Exactly. And and I truly believe that, that when I first started talking about tech on my page, it was for two reasons. One, it was because I was like, hey, y'all can make a bunch of money. But the other thing is that the more I became intrigued with the industry, mm-hmm. and this is before I even knew the AI boom was gonna happen, I was telling people, look y'all, everything is becoming technology. Mm-hmm. So you should consider getting in this industry or learning something. So that way, if you do get replaced by technology, you can actually get a better job yeah being the person overseeing that Facts. technology. Facts. And it's like, that's the thing that I think many people are missing. So I love that you touched on that, where it's like, yeah, AI, robotics, this technology, it's, it's definitely about to change things, but it also presents an opportunity for mm-hmm. you to uh, for you to be able to step into something significantly better. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like, it's, it's kind of like, the, I guess, kind of like the gospel in a way, where mm-hmm. it's like, yo, I got some bad news. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, this is the bad news, yeah. mm-hmm. but the good news, right. Right. is X, Y, and Z. Right. If you take advantage of this information right. that you're being given right now before it's too late. Right, exactly. And so um, I 100. think we're kind of on that cusp where everybody can kind of see 
kind of see everything happening. Yeah. And it's like you almost don't have an excuse. You don't. <laughs> if, you don't. Yeah. You got kids now. Like my my son is three and he like swipes through uh, his tablet and like knows how to get in the games and like he's like he's playing Galaga like Galaga was like when I was like 12 or 13 yeah, like that was like the game. thing yeah. dude is like getting he's three and he's advancing all kinds of levels in Galaga and I'm sitting here like I three mean, I couldn't beat that yeah, I, I couldn't even that. and I just I sat and I've watched him and I'm sitting here like but that's how that's how amazing the human mind is too like we limit yeah. ourselves thinking that we're just supposed to be doing this here right now yeah five years from now there's going to be some new job some new person some new thing that you actually might be really good at but if you limit yourself and think that oh i'm only going to be doing this and this ain't going to get no better that's that's not going to work you got to embrace the technology you got to you got to get ahead of the curve yeah man it's a huge opportunity yeah for sure. All right, so how can people who aren't working in tech use AI to grow their business or perform better at their job? Okay, so there's several things that you can do. Like I'm a, I'm a proponent of a chat GPT, Microsoft product, obviously. But things that you could do is, number one, you could research like what you're doing, right? Um, and see, see how you can make it better. Like say, for instance, if you are in marketing, right? Uh, maybe you want to figure out how to make a good marketing proposal or something like that. You can ask ChatGPT to give you a template of that. Uh, even if you if you're you know need a resume, right? Some people will say, "Man, I don't know how to write a resume." You can ask ChatGPT to give you a template on a resume based off of a job description. Um, you can have it write scripts for for videos. There, there's so many different things that you it whatever you need help in. Because remember, the data set is the internet now. Whatever you need help in, if it's found on the internet, it can can go out and find it up to 2021 it can go out and find it and help you so what you have to do as i mentioned it before is learn how to engineer the prompts to get what you need that takes time mm -hmm. that takes time to figure out okay i need to i need to figure out you know um uh if it's some type of script or some type of template i need to figure out how i can get beyond the bare minimum of it i could say write a blog on tech right and it'll spit out some crazy but i could probably say write a blog on tech um in cloud industry and you know over the last five years how things have advanced give me an outline and it can do that and then you can go and you can actually write the blog for it, you know because i don't really i don't i don't think anybody should actually trust that component to actually do the writing because then who really owns it yeah. And so that's the thing about a whole lot of copyright and oh, now because man. copyright like law says that you have had no other thing or person help you write it. So you have to be cautious about that type of things. Yeah. But as far as getting it, having ideas, those type of thing. Yeah, definitely. You use it to your advantage. You know, I'm, I'm uh, go ahead and admit this. Uh, not that this is a secret or anything, but we actually so for those of y'all that are watching and listening i'm gonna tell y'all straight up that the the title of this video whether it's a clip or you're watching the full video the title of this video is more than likely created by ai something that mm -hmm. we just started doing because we we're like hey let's start let's start using a lot of these platforms let's test these things out one to help us be more efficient but two so we can really have more of a hands-on we're not just talking mm -hmm. about things on a high level we right. can really give insight and so we, we played around with a few different platforms so even like when it comes to the title and the description uh, we use one platform uh, we have we use one platform we just started using called otter ai mm -hmm. yep heard of that and they do a few different things but we actually we actually just upload our videos onto it mm -hmm. and transcribe the entire yeah. uh transcribe the entire conversation we take the transcription and mm -hmm. we put it in chat gbt yeah. and we say hey chat gbt create a youtube title yeah. that's dope that that dis perfectly describes and summarizes this entire transcription yeah. and then after it does that we'll say also give us a perfect description right for this this video and it does that and of yeah. course it does it in seconds for those of y'all haven't tested yeah. it out it does it in seconds seconds so it's like and we can do that for every single clip so we'll take mm -hmm. all the clips and say hey give me same thing title description whatever mm -hmm. and so um we've been testing those things out and then we'll, depending on how we feel about it we'll take the title and we'll put it in vid iq mm -hmm. which is you could argue if it's AI, yeah, I guess technically it is, mm -hmm. and from the, the component that vidIQ takes from YouTube's d database, yeah. and then they kind of like determine what are the best titles right. for a YouTube video. So it does the same kind of chatbot yeah. thing. And yeah, we, we take the title that ChatGPT gives us, 
We put it in vidIQ because we know that they are a bit more specific to YouTube ranking. Right. And then, and then vidIQ says, hey, here are five different titles you can use. Mm -hmm. So, again, for those of y'all looking at the title description, uh, let us know in the comments if you agree with the title description or you feel like it's not a good fit. Because we, we've had people yeah. a couple times recently say, like, oh, this title doesn't describe the video. Yeah. So, right, mm, that's interesting to look at. Yeah. Like you mentioned, it isn't 100% right. accurate. Right. This technology is still in its infancy. It's mm -hmm. still a baby. Yeah. It has a lot of uh, growing to do. So, uh, man... Super good stuff. Obviously, y'all can tell I'm hyped. Y'all can tell I'm, I'm, I'm into this. Uh, you know, so I love it. I love it. Man, would love, uh, you know, we have a, a, a little bit left. Um, would love for you to share anything that's on your heart that you feel like you haven't been able to express on here or something that you just kind of thought about touching on. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, I think just going back to learn to embrace technology, right? Especially in all people. I, I don't, I'm, I, I just know that um being in a black community i found that you know being around a lot of my peers people just don't understand and we need to learn how to open up and explore and it's okay mm -hmm. it will make us better um though that's just one of the things like i speak all around the country and that's one of the things that i always encourage people to do just go and embrace be inquisitive i don't care how old you are yeah. Like just be inquisitive, find out you can create something in and, and you could possibly change the world. Like that's the whole thing. Like how many people am I talking to right now that or I, who I've talked to in the past that have gone in and, and done some amazing things? And I'm happy about that. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I was able to say, hey, listen, just take the time to embrace the technology. And that's one of the things that I, I everywhere I go, everywhere I speak, I always tell people take the time to embrace it because it really can change your life. 